classes that go into the whole month. Um, the stress of qualifying, the chaos of hard day, the traditions of the parade on Saturday, and then race day itself, uh, starting to go into the And now, it just means more of that. And each year, I think it was Tony Kanan in it, his victory celebration banquet speech a few years ago. He said most. A lot of times you do something and you check that box. So here at the Indy 500, you do it and it just gets further and further into your soul and you just want to do it again and again and again and again. And he's so true, so right, so true that each and every time I come back to this place, I think So tell me about your race car and the outlook of it. I think I'm quietly confident. We have a little more work to do on carpet to kind of get the balance a little better in traffic, see what the conditions are going to do. Um, I think on Monday's race practice, with the conditions as they were, they made every car look pretty good. Uh, there were some cars that were struggling on balance. There were other cars that looked really strong. I mean, obviously the front row has a benefit of qualifying up front, excuse me. But the 23 car from Carlin um, feels pretty good. The Chevy Power team is on the Feels good about the support from the Carlin team and, and Nova Lotus as well. Our 11th season with the race for Tennessee program. I'm looking forward to, to moving forward. I only have to pass 19 cars and I've got 500 miles to do it. Then. Mm -hmm. Last question. Can you explain the Yeah, I think uh, the last part of that's really key is that you're always looking for balance and progress during the race because if you're not continuing to make your car better as the conditions are right over those five and a half miles, then you're getting out of line. And, and what you're really looking for is the balance of grip between the front and the rear. So you, you adjust if it's understeer where the front doesn't want to turn, you put a little front grip right to the back to the front wing, your tire pressure is the rear, the tools we have in the cockpit. Um, if it's loose or free or oversteery, the rear is wanting to step out all the time, and that's a really, really scary situation for cars. Um, you really can't push or trust the, the car at all. So finding that balance where you can just lean on it laterally, through the corner, carry throttle in dirty air and traffic, and then in clean air, be able to open your hands up, smooth, your, smooth the line, and uh, try and get away. That's, that's really what you're looking for as you fill up the first the race. Thanks, Charlie, I had to uh, do It was a wise choice. I, I read that. Thank you, Bruce. I appreciate that. Now, what is your ability to be able to go through traffic at this track? Now, this thing is probably a lot of patience, but you've yeah. got you to be bold at times. Well, I think one of the, the challenges about how the racing has developed last year and this year, and I think this year is going to be skewed towards last year, um, but somewhere in the middle of 2017 and 2018, honestly, I think... For me, it's it's about being prepared to take advantage of those opportunities as they arrive. Right. It's it's almost a defensive offensive. You, know, you you kind of protect yourself as you're running in that line of traffic in that path. But if somebody a couple of cars up makes a mistake, box the guy in front of you, you have to be ready to pass. And I think it is. It's one of those types of racing that, that really benefits the patient and just waiting for those opportunities, being ready for them, constantly be on the lookout for them, but biding your time, biding your time, and then going and being willing and ready and having the card to be able to drop the hammer when you need to. Not only are you carrying the hopes for Charlie Kimball and your sponsor, but in a lot of ways you're the, the lone Carlin in the story. You feel in a lot of ways you're kind of carrying the team. Well, I feel like I've got great support. Um, if if Max and Pato are alongside this, alongside me on the starting grid, or as the case is, I feel like I've got great support from the whole Carlin organization. Max and Pato have been very supportive um, after Sunday night. I'm still heartbroken for them. That's I can't even imagine the pain. Not just they. But the mechanics and the crews and, and trying to go out and get a result on Sunday as much as much for the team as for myself as for my family um, but for those guys because they put just as much work and effort in as every other mechanic in the garage area uh, so I think I feel like while I may be 
the only entry I have to support at the whole time. Charlie, we know you're close with Andrew. You spent some time with him yesterday. Does he give you any advice to calm the nerves ahead of 500s, or is that not come on? He was uh, he was sharing with me yesterday actually that uh, he he's blown away every year by how much uh, we have going on in the week leading up to the 500. He goes, you were in Dallas, you were in the car, then you were in Dallas, and then you had a community day, day. You went to see you know elementary school kids, and you got a charity ping pong thing. And then you've got a media day tomorrow, and then you have carb day, and then you have a parade. He goes, if, if that many people talk to me you know, hours before a game, I'd lose it. He goes, I don't know how you guys do it. So uh, I think it's they're very different sports, and, and I just appreciate his support. He's, he's a race fan and become a race fan, um, and it was great to see him yesterday. Uh, we made it to the second round, and I'm, I mean, I, I was I was worried about his back because he really had to carry me. <laughs> you, since you drive cars for a living and get to go at high speeds, what do you drive when you're out in town or with your family? I drive a Chevy Tahoe. And to be fair, it's the RST with the, the V8 in it. So it's plenty of horsepower, handles great, and has enough capacity to throw the dogs in the back or tow my boat if we're going to the lake. And, I, my favorite thing about it is uh, heated seats because this California kid, when I'm going to the gym in the middle of winter, getting ready and preparing for the month of May, that all happens in December and January. When there's snow on the ground, having a heated seat is clutch. What would you call your dream car? Ooh, I think you've got to go back to the sort of 60s era Corvette, that gorgeous Coke bottle shape, classic you know, Corvette from, from that era. I mean, I wouldn't turn down a, a classic old school uh, Chevy pickup as well. You know, steak bed, four on the floor, kind of just a a real, a real classic uh, car. I think would be. I, I mean, I would never kick those out of the garage. Those <laughs> Charlie, you're a California kid, but can you feel the momentum of your fans in Indy? We know you've become such a staple around here. We love it. Um, my wife and I moved to, to Indiana coming up on 10 years ago now, and we love being residents. We love being Hoosiers. We've embraced that Californian Hoosier mentality. Um, we feel really, really honored and lucky to be as supported as we are in the community here. Um, and while, uh, as, as a farming analogy, while our roots are in California, uh, we've really blossomed and grown our family here in Indiana. Finally, if Andrew Luck, you know his mind so well, if he put all his time and effort into IndyCar, do you think he would have a chance to sneak in, not on this level, but somewhere in the driving series, just a mind of that power, do you think he has the mind for it? Well, I think uh, any elite athlete has has that that perspective that works. His problem is uh, he's on the tall side, <laughs> right. and on the broad side. Um, and he said yesterday at the ping pong tournament that it felt good to, to be the bigger guy in the room because I think in the locker room with his O-line, he's one of the smaller ones out there. Who from the Game of Thrones do you want on your uh, pit crew? Uh, God, it's been so long since I've read the books. Um, I didn't. I haven't watched the series hardly at all. I mean, you, you got to pick a dragon, right? Like got that's. It. I mean, because if you can fly, you pretty much win. <laughs> that's right. How do you feel about your car this year? So we feel there. pretty good. Um, I think we have a little more work to do depending on the conditions tomorrow getting ready for Sunday. The forecast for Sunday, I mean, if anyone has a crystal ball, I would love to look into it because it keeps changing. And while we can't control it or change it, we have to be ready to react and, and prepare for it. Um, feel really good about my guys. Though. They have put a monumental effort in. They have stayed extremely focused all month long. With, with it, all of that, the pressure and the drama of qualifying weekend, my guys just stayed solid, lent hands when they could, supported teammates when they could, and then when we got to race practice on Monday, they were able to get their heads down, and, and we were really felt good on Monday in traffic, felt good on our own, good on some pit stop practice, went out and saw them doing some static stops today, and, and I was pretty impressed. Good luck to you. Thank you.